Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yes. A 20-year-old female presented the ER with complaints of acute onset headache of one day duration. On our initial 10-second assessment, patient was conscious oriented and obeying commands. Coming to airway, airway was patent. Coming to breathing, the respiratory rate of 20 per minute and saturation of 97% in room air. Coming to circulation, BP was 120 bar 60 millimeters of mercury and pulse rate of 80 beats per minute. All peripheral pulses were equally palpable. Coming to disability, GCS of 15 by 15, bilateral pupil equally reacting to light. Coming to exposure, temperature of 98.6 degree Fahrenheit, GRBS of 120 milligram per deciliter. At this point of time, uh, the pain score was around uh, 5 by 10. And we have given injection PCM 1 gram IV stat. Coming to urgency of primary survey, uh, we have again went for reassessment of the patient. And again the pain score is in the 6 by 10. So we have given injection tramadol 50 mg IV stat along with injection ondansetron 4 mg IV stat. Coming to ambulatory, a 20 year old female present to the ER with complaints of headache of one day duration. It was acute in onset, unilateral, right-sided, thrombing type in nature. It was preceded by mood disturbances and depression. She also complains of depression. Dip dip mood disturbance and depression. low mood. Uh, she also complains of numbness of hands. It was also associated with nausea and vomiting. Vomiting was non-projectile and proceeds uh, does not proceed headache. Following headache, she had episodes of vomiting and after which she get uh, relieved slightly of headache. S light tends to increase, aggravates the headache. And uh, once uh, we have switched off the lights at this point of time and uh, she gets somewhat relieved of headache. She had history of lack of sleep due to her uh, upcoming university exams. No history of any fever, altered behavior, blurring of vision, deviation of any angle of mouth, weakness, seizures, trauma history. No changes of headache with lifting, cuffing or bending. The patient also gives similar episodes in the past. No history of any allergies. The patient is not on any medications. The last meal was taken at 2 p.m. Coming to general examination. No pallor, no ictus, no sinus, no clipping, no generalized lymphadenopathy or pedal edema. Coming to CNS examination, GCS was E4, V5 and M6. Pupil bilaterally equally reacting to light. Higher mental functions, cranial nerves were normal. Reflexes were preserved. Uh, power 5 by 5 on all the four limbs. No signs of any meningeal irritation. Other systems was within normal limits. Our diagnosis was, it was a classical migraine which was precipitated by decreased sleep. What is classical migraine? Uh, migraine can be either with aura and without aura. Hmm. If it is with aura, it is classical migraine and without aura, it is common migraine. Common 80 percentage is common migraine. Common migraine. Without aura, it presents. What are the uh, trigger points of my trigger, triggers of migraine? What are the auras of migraine? Auras can be a visual aura, sensory aura. Hmm. Most common are visual aura visual. where zigzag lines okay. can be seen. Some floaters, floaters. black spots. Okay. Uh, the triggers of migraine most common can be uh, any lack of sleep, sunlight, hmm. uh, excessive stress, hmm. uh, excessive exertion, multiple precipitating factors. Are multiple means what? Uh, sound, smell. Sound, smell, correct time when the patient is food. not taking no. food. Some uh, develop migraine because of uh, chocolate, coffee, uh, a certain uh, like a spray, smell. Okay. Uh, they, are, they are the common causes, but what is the most common cause for most of the patients? Sunlight. Sunlight is the most common cause. Okay. Fear of travel. When you are traveling, fear of travel itself can produce migraine. Okay. So there are a lot of triggers can produce migraine. Okay. What is the typical nature of migraine? Typical nature of uh, uh, migraine headache? Uh, episodic unilateral throbbing type pain. Uh, where there are basically four phases, a mm. predominal phase where there will be mood disturbances, okay. depression, okay. like that and then the aura develops following which the headache and the post-normal phase. Okay. What are the uh, red flags in migraine? Red uh, flags means we know that this is, this may not be mi migraine, maybe something else which are more dangerous than migraine. 
basically red flag signs of dangerous headache are like a hypertensive patient with age more than 55 years mm. uh, with a raised ESR that will point towards yeah, giant coming cell. to emergency room we don't know all this thing. they come with a headache what are the red flags and headache uh, one is age more than 55 years the acute suppose person. I have migraine for a long time and uh, when my age my, uh, my age crosses 55 is it become a red flag one-sided weakness. Red flags are totally different. One-sided weakness is a part, sometimes it can be part of migraine, sometimes it can be a red flag because neurological weakness associated with headache is always a red flag. Okay. Uh, headache which changes with uh, bending, cuffing and... Migraine can increase with bending, cuffing, oh this patient goodness. also having... Fever. Headache. Associated fever can be due to... Uh, uh, meningitis. But what is, suppose somebody is having a migraine, you know that past history of migraine is there. He come to emergency room and come uh, tell that I have headache now. You are asking whether you have migraine or not. He is telling, yes, I have migraine. So, in that condition, how do you diagnose that there is a red flag in that? Already, most of the, 50% uh, of the common population will have migraine. So, when you are going to be alerted, that you need a scan. Pain persisting. Pain, migraine persi pain will persist behavior. if you don't give paracetamol IV or uh, altered behavior vitals. Like you have to told already altered behavior can be there in migraine. Change in pattern of headache. That is most important. Migraine, you uh, take the typical history of migraine. That will same history for a long time from standard standard onwards, I have same type of headache. It uh, remains for a long time like that only. Change in, suddenly change in pattern. Every day I am getting migraine headache on right side. Suddenly, recently I am getting headache on the left side. Which is all sim same nature, but it is, it is a change in pattern. Change in severity. So, last 10 years I have ch same severity. Suddenly, this headache is very severe headache. That is a change in pattern. Then like you told, neurological deficit. Neurological problem can be there in migraine. That is called as? Complicated, complicated migraine. migraine. That can be there. But uh, suppose you have a neurological problem associated with headache. And that is always a red flag. Then <coughs> other raised ICP signs like you have pupillary asymmetry, pupillary, uh, pupillary dilatation, severe vomiting. Vomiting can also be a part of migraine. So. That may not be a very uh, good red flag, but uh, change in pupillary size, pupillary reaction, all these things are very important. Like you told, neck stiffness is a, uh, this one. Uh, neck stiffness with severe headache in last one hour. What is your diagnosis? Uh, Subarachnoidal uh, hemorrhage. So that cannot be meningitis. Meningitis headache, we, we know that it takes some days, few days headache, constant headache, suddenly it increases. But subarachnoid hemorrhage, all of a sudden it comes next stiffness will be there. So, these are the red flags. Okay. Which all conditions you ask for a CT scan in migraine? Will you ask a CT scan in migraine? Again, if you are seeing a red flag like this, you have to ask for a CT scan. Otherwise, normal migraine for many years, we don't uh, take any CT scan or MRI. Only change in nature, change in severity or associated neurological finding only, we take MRI or MR angiogram, MR venogram, all these things. Why we are taking CT scan in migraine? Is it uh, CT is best or uh, other modalities are best? Screening tool. If you are having severe headache, you want to roll out a bleed, then CT is enough. But most of the time, migraine can be associated or migraine patient can have aneurysms. In that condition, CT or MRI will not pick up that. What is the ideal investigation? Angiogram. MR angiogram may be required. but. For that, you need a strong clinical suspicion. That's why we are telling uh, red flags. Red flag, no, knowledge about red flag is very, very important to go for a uh, uh, like proper imaging technique. Okay. Then, what happened to the patient? So then we again reassess the patient. <coughs> what you have given after initially, patient came with severe headache to emergency room. What are the things you have done for the patient? First thing, what you will do? Uh, we'll calm, calm, down. calm down the patient, switch off the light. Then? Uh, then we have uh, put the IV cannula. Put the IV cannula, then? Pain control, pain management. What pain management do you have to do? Uh, 
uh, we follow the WHO pattern like the initial we were mild moderate and severe is there hmm. in mild cases we will What is that pattern called as step ladder. step ladder pattern okay in mild cases we will go with uh, NSAIDs hmm. like uh, we can give PCM hmm. Uh, moderate PCM cases. is not an NSAID. NSAID. It will act like an NSAID. That's all. It, it mm. is a painkiller. It mm. is not non-steroidal anti-inflammatory category. It is something different. In moderate cases, we can give mild opioids. Can be given. We can give okay. injection. Tramadol can be given. In what is the problem case. in uh, migraine giving tramadol? Further yeah. precipitate vomiting. So. Can produce vomiting. So anti-emetic has to be given yeah. first before giving any drug. Okay. In severe cases, we have to go ahead with. Uh, high dose opioids. Okay. Contain. Here, what are the alternatives for uh, only NSAIDs or opioids uh, in migraine? You have any alternative? Yeah, we can give uh, mild cases. We will go ahead with NSAIDs. Hmm. Moderate cases, we can give triptans, 5 hydroxy. What are the triptans available? Uh, Risatriptan, hmm. uh, sumatriptan, hmm. is most commonly used. Risatriptan is available as. At present, it is available as sublingual, sublingual uh, ta tablets yes. are uh, available. So that is that gives very good result. You give a paracetamol injection or NSAID uh, tablet or injection with anti-emetic and risatriptan sublingually, it gives uh, immediate effect. What are the other things you uh, do in migraine other than this? So this, uh, these are definitive treatment. In migraine, we can give this definitive. What are the adjunct treatment you can give uh, in emergency room? Prophylaxis. No, no. Adjunct treatment means in emergency room, you can give all these things. Oxygen. Oxygen. Mm. So you can give oxygen. What is the action of oxygen in uh, blood vessels in brain? Uh, usually headache is precipitated by vasodilatation. Vasodilatation. So there is a problem in migraine. What oxygen does? Uh, vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction in brain. Okay, so that relieves some amount of uh, uh, pain. Okay, what other drugs can be used? Any other, any other mineral can be used here? Mineral, mineral or this is not vitamin. This mineral, what is that? Sodium. This is not sodium. This magnesium. IV magnesium sulfate is another useful drug in acute migraine. But they are all adjunct therapies, not uh, mainstay therapy. Mainstay therapy is either NSAID or paracetamol or tramadol, morphine. But anti-emetic has to be given before that. Then you go for risatriptan, sublingual or sumatriptan tablet. That can be given. Okay. Then? Steroids. Steroids are not very good choice in acute migraine. They are not indicated. Because it is not an inflammatory process. There may be some amount of inflammation in the intravascular compartment. But it is, uh, steroids are not going to make big difference in that. Okay, what happened to the patient? What you have given for this patient? Uh, we have given basically NSAIDs. Hmm. Uh, what we, NSAID you have given? Uh, naproxen. Naproxen, oral tablet. Oral. Okay. Then? Uh, then we find out the precipitating factors. Hmm. And then since it is a chronic uh, episode, multiple What is episode, the precipitating factor here in uh, this patient? This patient lack of sleep lack of and sleep. stress. Stress. Okay. okay. So we advise uh, prophylaxis of migraine also. What migraine prophylaxis? What all migraine prophylaxis you can give other than uh, regularizing these stress factors? Uh, basically, there are class 1, class 2 and class 3 agents. Mm. Class 1 agents can be propanolol and topiramate. Mm. Class 2 agents can be tricyclic antidepressants and venlafaxin. Mm. Class 3 can be clonidine okay. and funars. Okay. So what was given for this patient? Uh, the patient was started on uh, topiramate. Topiramate. Flunorazine, what is the advantage? If you start flunorazine for this patient, what is the advantage? This patient is not having sleep. Flunorazine, if you take a very good sleep, you get. You may get more sleep. So, flunorazine may be ideal for this patient. Topiramate also can be given. And uh, the main problem in this patient is, is not uh, having adequate sleep. That may be the trigger. Either you give a tablet to produce more proper sleep or advise the patient to have uh, like uh, exercises or yoga for uh, better sleep the, and topiramate can be started. Propranolol, how do you give? 80 to 320 mg per day. Hmm. Or like. So, what are the preparations available? Propranolol? Oh. Tablets. Tablet. Plain propranolol is there? So, uh, SR is there. So, normally we start plain propranolol. 20 milligram TID or uh, like that, and when it becomes SR, BD is enough. Okay. What are the contraindications for propranolol? 
crosses the blood brain barrier it causes so that what what is the problem in patients with uh, decrease uh, beta blocker since it can, can cause main problem is whether he is asthma or not but you have told already this patient is having depression what is the action of propranolol in depression will it aggravate depression or not decreases <laughs> it's a anti anxiety drug so from anxiety it will come back for a like a depressive state so if you start beta blockers one of the side effect of beta blocker is mild depression okay so it can still further come down okay but in a young patient is it a male or female <coughs> female patient in a male patient young male patient if you are starting propranolol what adverse effect it can produce for him Okay. it can produce sexual dysfunction so that also we should keep in mind whenever we start any tablet we should know all these things we should tell the patient also okay so already a depressed patient we we better avoid beta blocker even flunarosin also can have similar problem that produces more sleep that is only advantage topiramate does not have all this problem what happened to the patient afterwards when the uh, headache was relieved 3 uh, to 4 hours observation the patient got relief Okay. We advise for a uh, general medicine consultation, and they started on to permit and send back the patient. Okay, okay. What is esophagic migraine? Esophagic migraine. Esophagia means what? Esophagia means what? Esophagia means head. Algia means pain. Esophagia means no pain. Esophagia means no pain. esophagic migraine patient disorder. person with vomiting abdominal patient person with something else like somebody is having six sag movement flutters in the eye some uh, blind spots in the eye but there is no headache so there is one of the common presentation they may not have a headache but suddenly they lose their vision for one or two minutes complete loss of vision there is no headache that's a part of migraine it is called as esophagic migraine complicated migraine means Uh, various presentations are there basilar migraine what is basilar migraine a vertigo attacks yeah like so a, uh, 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 that uh, same features of uh, brain stem stroke they can have brain stem stroke these complicated some can, can have weakness right yes. side weakness left side migraine. Weak, hemiplegic migraine like that uh, they can have neurological problem also in that case sometimes we will have to first episode we will have to take a mri scan to rule out a stroke the same problem is occurring again and again then we may not take a mri or ct scan okay so in that case that complicated migraine this basic treatment treatment like propranolol or uh, flunarosin uh, may produce harm so in that condition also we don't use basic drugs okay somebody is having basic migraine without any problem a young child who is studying for 10th standard beta blockers may be very good but there your that flunarosin may not work because they sleep more students we cannot give flunarosin okay so after discharge should we follow up this patient uh, we have to follow up the fish okay uh, we we didn't follow up yes. okay anything else you want to add any other newer devices are available to treat migraine uh, so newer latest drugs like uh, crp antagonists like erenimab is available hmm. and uh, transcranial stimulators vagal nerve stimulators are mm-hmm. available transcranial stimulators are available but not okay. in india that also can be tried okay uh, so then uh, in the ed aspective uh, when a patient comes with headache our point is whether identify whether it is a dangerous headache or not mm-hmm. whether the patient requires admission or not oh. so from the ed perspective uh, we have to think about some other diseases also if a patient like the red flag signs of uh, or the criteria for dangerous headache if a patient presents with more than uh, a hypertensive patient with more than 55 years and uh, tenderness in the temporal area we need to suspect giant cell arthritis if the patient uh, headache is associated with acute onset fever and neck stiffness we must think about uh, meningitis and if it is a subacute presentation with uh, worsening uh, headache and uh, vomiting precedes the headache and uh, the headache worsens on coughing lifting and bending uh, we have to think about raised icit and meningeal irritation and if the patient describes the headache as the worst headache of his life with the peak pain within 1 minute of headache 
you to think about thunderclap headache in subarachnoid hemorrhage and any acute headache with abnormal neurological examination comes under dangerous headache and needs evaluation and admission okay. so they are called as red flags and migraine okay it is not migraine red flags and headache okay if you know that migraine already patient is having migraine then change in pattern change in severity is only one thing that is a red flag that then they you have to take a mri you, even if already mri is taken there is a change in pattern or change in severity you have to take repeat mri otherwise uh, uh, routine migraine cases we don't do any uh, like this one okay what is a uh, like association between uh, which i temporomandibular joint cervical spine all these things to migraine your eye temporomandibular joint cervical spine all migraines are not migraine whatever we are making diagnosis it can be wrong also somebody is having temporomandibular joint dysfunction that is one of the common cause for a headache whatever you do you will not be able to diagnose so they have temporomandibular dysfunction cervical spondylosis they also can have severe headache some heaviness in head it also all will be diagnosed misdiagnosed as migraine okay high lesions i li- no, not high lesions the uh, like uh, uh, errors in like your vision refractory. refractory errors that also can trigger migraine it can aggravate migraine okay it will not produce migraine it can trigger so the visual disturbances when you are reading they suppose you are having a reading glass and if you are not using that it can trigger migraine and it can aggravate migraine so whenever you have a migraine patient you have to search all these things uh, migraine may be only because of your temporomandibular joint whatever medicine you give that will not subside you whatever you correct that temporomandibular problem immediately it will subside all these things we have to keep in mind all migraines are not simple migraines some uh, triggers will be there inside your body itself some triggers will be there some migraines are related to your uh, stomach whenever we have acidity abdominal pain migraine can easily triggered with that okay so you have to ask all these histories whether it is associated with gastritis like uh, joint pains are there neck pain is there visual disturbances is there all these things can be associated okay thank you